decided to do a quick follow-up video to the last one on fixing the tail cone because afterwards there were some interesting questions that came up from people either on different social media or in the comments or privately that I thought were, were really interesting and worth addressing. So I wanted to take a second to do that. And before we get things started there though, I want to make sure to reiterate I am not an expert. I am building for the first time and this is not meant to be instructional or me telling you what to do. This is simply me going over what our experience was and how we decided to do things and why we made different decisions that we did. It is not meant to be instructional. So if you are in the same situation, you need to make sure to do all of your own research and do like we did, which is talk to Vans, which is the second thing I wanted to make sure to reiterate is that we did go to Vans, talk to them at length, to go over not only here's the problem, do we need to fix it, and then how do we fix it, and coming up with the particular plan that we did on using the splicing method. But if you are in the same boat, do make sure to talk to them and figure out your own solution because they're the experts, I am not. <laughs> um, and I guess the only other thing before we get kicked off is if you like the shirts, plainlady.com slash store, plenty of time to get them before Oshkosh. And uh, if you want to support the channel, I'm also on Patreon with Plain Lady, and I'll put a link below. But with that said, let's get down to everything. So again, to do a quick review of the problem, the G channels that we put in were too short for the stiffeners. And that is because they were listed as eight feet long, but they're actually half inch short. And what I did, just to be clear, because I think maybe this is the point of confusion, if I had a piece that's this big and I'm supposed to measure out most of the length, because this we're talking about the order of eight feet and trying to use the tape measure, um, it seemed like I was going to get more precise measurement if I instead used the ruler and measured off how much to cut off. So again, that was on the order of just a couple inches. I don't have the exact measurements here in front of me, um, but it was something like I think you had to cut four inches off. And so I did all the math based of how much to cut off based on the assumption that they were actually eight feet long. A lot of you had asked, why did you think they were eight feet long? People brought up, you know, oh, it sounds like wood. It sounds like two by fours where two by fours are actually an inch and a half by three and a half and not actually two inches by four inches. I am acutely aware of that wood dimensions are not exactly precise like that. However, with everything else in the build, um, Everything else at that point in time had been the exact dimensions that was stated. I mean, some of these things realized were down to like the thousandth of an inch precise when it's talking about, oh, here's the thickness of the metal and, and whatnot. So, and I think I'd have to go back and double check in the videos, but I'm, I'm like 98% sure that I did actually check on the six foot J channels. And when I saw that the six foot J channels were in fact six feet, I said, okay, no, good. This is just like everything else we've gotten. It's exactly this, the right length. And I was mistaken. <laughs> so, um, the section for any of you who are still wondering or confused or to keep you from having to go back to the tail cone where I'm talking about 10-5 step two. So that's, that's the section in question there, um, where we were cutting everything. Another question I got that I thought was a really good one was why did we rivet the parts together if we saw that they were too short? And the simple answer is I didn't. I didn't see, I didn't realize it was too short. And, and keep in mind, like this was very early on in the build for us still. Um, we had done the tail cone before the elevator. So at this point we'd done the rudder, the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizer. And then we did in the tail cone. So we were still really new at this. And in the instructions in, let's see, I think I pulled it up here. Yeah, I pulled it open here. So after it has you go and measure everything, it has you draw the center line down the length of the J channels, and then it has you measure in a certain amount. And I don't remember how much, and it's not on this page. Um, but you're supposed to measure from the end, basically your starting point. And so then in 10-7, step seven, this is, this is why I think we didn't see it you are supposed to quote center the forward end marks and the rivet hole center lines in the f 1047 
C, D, and E stiffeners on the indicated holes in the F1073 right side skin. And then you do the mat drilling. So I don't have the tail cone out here, but it's talking about starting, like this is the fuselage, that's where the tail cone matches. It's telling you to start at this end of the tail cone, not the back end of the tail cone. The forward end of the tail cone is where you were supposed to line up the um, markings that you'd put on it. So if I'm lining up the forward end, I'm not looking at the aft end. The J channels went into the different frames and bulkheads, and then you put the side skins on, and then you kind of aligned everything. So all the stiffeners were just sort of sitting in there, and then you shimmied them back and forth, left and right a little bit, um, to get them aligned to that forward hole. So it just, again, new builder didn't even consider, we were sure we'd measured it right. <laughs> again, I'd, I'd gone and measured everything. The measure twice, cut once only works if you've started with the right measurement for the length that you're cutting from. And so even though I'd measured twice when I was measuring how much to cut off, I hadn't I just hadn't checked to see that it was in fact eight feet. Cause again, everything else up to this point had been exactly the right dimensions. It wasn't like wood. Um, and so I think that's just, that's how it got missed is that you're, you're aligning everything at the forward end. So I'm not paying any attention to what's at the aft end and didn't even think about it when we were doing the drilling. And even when you're doing the drilling, you're lining up the center line and aligning that while you're doing the max drilling didn't click, didn't occur that, oh, hey, we got to the end here where now there's this tab under the, bu the bulkhead at the back, and is it going underneath that? Nope. <laughs> it just it didn't, we were following the directions. It was just kind of one of these things where, you know, it, it looked like we were just following the directions and doing everything, so you weren't kind of thinking out of the box yet. And then, if you're wondering how it was then that we discovered the problem, it wasn't until later on um, when I was working on the, the wing spars actually, because in one of the first steps there, let's see, it was 13-2 step five, you're making the stiffeners for the wings aligning these J channels up with the flanges on the spars to match drill the holes through the holes in the spars into the J channels. And I was terrified of screwing something up on the wing spars because I knew they were a set and I knew that they were expensive, not just to buy them, but then especially to ship them because they're so heavy. And so I, I was just, um, I think just like, over over cautious and that's when i think i went and had measured everything three times and i think that's the point when i finally said let me let me just to be 110 percent sure measure these out and i think that's when i said it's like i want to make sure to measure the full length so there's no chance of screw up and i went and measured it and i'm like these measurements are wrong like they're off by half an inch. And um, I think Tyler had helped me with it and we were sitting here going through it. And one of us was like, no, you know, I went and measured it just right. We'd done the same method of measuring it from the end initially. And because I was just being super paranoid about not wanting to screw anything up with the wing spars, I'd measured the full length and I'm like, no, they're off. They're off by like half an inch, what's going on. And that's when suddenly measured the full length and went, oh no. And, <laughs> I'll see if I can find a video of the epiphany moment that I had in the garage where I went, oh my God, <laughs> like if these aren't eight feet, what are the odds that Van's going to send us like some that are exactly eight feet and some that aren't. So then it was measuring all of them to check. Like, was this a fluke one? Was this weird? No, they were all half inch short. And that's when I ran inside suddenly. And I, I looked at that aft end there of the tail cone and went, no, <laughs> they don't go under the tabs. And I was just like, oh. 
that's how the realization happened. And I don't know why it just didn't even occur to us when we were riveting them. And all I can, all I can attribute it to is just, you're doing so many there and I'm lying in the tail cone and it wasn't comfortable already. And by the time we'd gotten to the ones in the back, you know, I'd now been in there for how long. And I think it, I wasn't, it just, it, I wasn't even like looking to see like, oh, is this, again, I had no inkling that anything could have been wrong because as far as I knew, I had done everything with the instructions there, right? And it just, I wasn't, I think it's just a new builder thing. You're just, you're not quite programmed yet for kind of what to look for. Hang on, this doesn't look right. And I think that that's something that just now being where we're at, I know there's been other times since where you're like, hang on a second, wait, 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 let me go back and double or triple check this. Something doesn't feel right. Something doesn't look right or whatnot. And you, you catch, you, you kind of have a better feel of what it is you're looking for. You're not just, okay, I'm, I'm just like reading, reading the instructions. So yeah, so that's, that's how we caught it. Uh, let's see. Couple other things that came up. One, uh, a lot of you said you liked the format where it was filming that way, and a couple of you said, "Oh, can I can I film the rest of them through lightning holes like that?" Um, no, <laughs> I have definitely some better angles coming up in in all these other ones now that I had the different cameras. But uh, that one was out of necessity, and to be honest, having the camera in there was as much for me as it was for filming videos because I used the screen as like a, a mirror. I was able, because I had the, when I was filming, I had the screen facing forward on my phone. And so I was able to look here on the screen and see the, like the, the backside of whatever I was working on. So whatever I couldn't see from my little vantage point here through my little, my little lightning hole that I could look through, I could see what was on the backside of everything when I was trying to feel around for, um, for like the shop heads on the rivets to pop out or whatnot. Uh, or if I was trying to count holes and I couldn't see them from where I was at, because again, you've got that, that curved flange there of the J channel, which would obstruct a little bit of the view. Um, plus for me, like I, I showed you at the end of the other video, my arms were covered in bruises working there in that tight little space. That was, that was tough. Uh, let's see. What else could I cut the J channel with? Like I, I know the question came up with the hacksaw. Um, and I, the thing, the thing that's tough is it's not only that the J channel you saw me working on in the video was either, I forget if it was the one at the top or if it was the middle one. Um, but I had a little bit easier access there, but especially when you got to the one that was closest to the bottom, um, there, again, there's just, there's very, very little room to work with in there. Even when I tried to do in the first video, just using not the first video, the first one I tried to cut, I started with using the snips because I wasn't so sure if I was comfortable with the idea of going in there with the, uh, with the Dremel, not wanting to damage anything and, or make a bigger problem. Uh, but I mean, even trying to get in there with those with enough space to open and close and position and maneuver just right, it, it was really tough. Um, yeah, there's just, there's really not a lot of space to work with in there. So uh, that's why I just, I went with the Dremel because at least then with the, with the spinning bit, I didn't need as much, uh, like again, like space. It, it was awkward to position, but it was a lot less, it took up a lot less space in, in an already tight space to work in. Oh, and someone had asked about, what about putting an angle bracket and connecting it to the web of the bulkhead there at the back. So I, I, from what I gathered from reading their question, um, it was, I guess, what if we'd put an angle bracket where part of it was attached to the web of that bulkhead that had the flange that we were trying to tuck under and then have the other side of the angle bracket go, have rivet holes that go through the little flange that we missed and then a couple holes in the in the the J channel and the only thing I would say to that is just that it's not 90 degrees where that meets because again like the tail cone tapers off towards the back so if here if here was the the web there of that bulkhead you know the J channel is coming at it like so because this is these are both sides there of the 
of the plane coming at it. So you wouldn't have a little 90 degree uh, angle there. You'd, you'd have to now have it to whatever angle. So, and again, not an expert. This is, I'm just saying like, this was just the thing that came to my mind when, when that question was asked. It's just, it's, it's not 90 degrees. So now I have to like figure out how to do it. And even still trying to think now, what if I'm drilling holes into the bulkhead? I, I, I'm not, not not an engineer by trade and not an expert enough at this to say that I would be like, yeah, I'm just going to drill some more holes in the bulkhead. Um, not to say that, that concept wouldn't work, but again, talk to Vans. If you have a different idea, if you're in the same boat and you have different ideas on how to fix this, talk to Vans. And, and let them be the ones to help guide you on the decision-making process. The good news is it did work out really, really well. Hopefully you guys saw that in the video. Hopefully everything made sense there in the video. But if you, if you do have that problem, I mean, please, 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 if you cut yours too short, please call Vans and talk to them and come up with a solution with them because from my understanding, from talking to them, they told us to fix it. And if I remember correctly, and again, this was from a while ago, it's because I, if I remember right, that there were a couple, I think there were RV14s where they'd had people make the same mistake and they'd cut them too short and that they ended up having some cracking in the skins there at that bulkhead um, just because not having those six stiffeners coming in on both sides there of the bulkhead, I guess it just wasn't helping to... It, it, it clearly provided enough extra, I'm gonna guess some sort of like torsion support to keep from twisting by having three ribs on either side that it's now attached to. Um, again, not an expert, not sure, but that that's that's why, if I remember correctly, that was the whole concern about why they said, no, we, we really think you should go and fix this. Um, because of, of people in similar situations in a different model. So that's, that was it. But if you're in the same boat, call Vans, talk to them, make a plan. Hopefully, uh, hopefully at least this was entertaining. You got to see something that wasn't in the instructions. It was a fix we had to do, but yeah. Um, but though, yeah, so those are, those are the, the biggest questions I think that, that came up that were, were interesting. I thought were worth addressing. So just one little follow-up video, but thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so for more videos like these and to follow along as we build our RV tent.